what we learned through a lot of trial and error over a three-year pilot period, uh, to, to make a long story short, is uh, people who've been on the streets, um, they, they may not necessarily want to go to a shelter. They may not necessarily want to stop drinking alcohol. They may not want to take psychiatric medications. Uh, and they may not want to go to a shelter. But almost every single person I've met except two want housing. And if, you, if we initiated the conversation that way, hi, my name is Becky. I work with Street to Home. Um, has anyone ever talked with you about housing before? Would you like to talk with me about trying to get you into housing? The first thing that they would say is like, no, no, no. And I was like, no, no, I mean housing, like your own apartment. And they'd be like, huh? You know, really? <laughs> like they didn't. It was like too good to be true. They didn't actually believe that that was what we meant. And actually, at the time, I didn't really have housing to offer them. This was a, um, a big leap of faith for all of us. And I told them that. I was like, well, I don't really have the housing, <laughs> but I'm willing to work with you on getting the housing. And one person at a time, we just we all just slogged through this horrific bureaucracy uh, where at every turn, it was like, oh, that's not the wrong form. Or, um, oh, well, no, you need to have that on the blue piece of paper. Or, no, I don't have the authority to do that. You have to talk to the person in that cubicle. And it was just really um, a, a, just this uh, a Rube Goldberg thing, you know, <laughs> machine of how to get someone into housing. But we, we never lost track of that. And we did house people directly off the streets, which was really pretty unheard of in New York City. Uh, and, and blew away this sort of whole mindset that people have to go through these really complicated hoops to ask our most disabled people who are at the highest risk of dying in our whole society to negotiate very complicated bureaucracies, much less you know, take care of things that are on this level of Maslow's hierarchy of need, like self-actualization, before you've taken care of these things is really kind of crazy. Um, so the other thing I think that's a little more nuanced than inside baseball, but I think this audience can deal with it, is uh, that housing people isn't housing people isn't enough for census reduction either. You have to house the right people. And there's a whole bunch of different manifestations of homelessness. Um, from some people, most people are just homeless for one day, and a lot of people are homeless for just a couple weeks. But there's some people who've been homeless for decades, and if you, it's it's almost tempting, I think, to put a lot of energy into people who've been homeless for a very short period of time because it's A, they're less disabled, and B, it's more rewarding, and C, like you might actually have something to show at the end of the day for what you did. Um, we turned that completely on our he its head, and what we learned was uh, that we had to force our workers and the system to orient, it's pretty much all the king's horses and all the king's men went to the people who had been on the streets the very longest, who also had the highest risk of dying. Um, and when we, when we subverted that whole order and that whole system to where the next person who's been homeless the longest, and we're talking 30 years here, you know, uh, with six disabling conditions gets the next unit of housing that we have. That's when we started seeing the census reductions that we saw in Times Square. Um, and uh, we were very, very focused on Times Square, and we did hit that 87% reduction. Uh, it was not all pretty. It was a lot of trial and error. But when the city, the biggest city in the country, you know, right, saw in, in, a, in a relatively small area, absolutely, if any of you have been to Times Square, all of you will nod and say, yeah, I didn't see anybody on the streets there, I think, except for the two people that I know of. Um, uh, but when the city saw that, they said, hey, that's what we're going to pay for. We're gonna take, they took all of their money back that they were spending on people doing things that were that complicated process stuff. They, they took all that money back and said, if you want our money, you need to do what they did. Um, so we said, well, we'd like to do that with some city money now. Uh, and, and we now have responsibility for all of Brooklyn and Queens. So we went from 25 blocks to about 25 square, or 250 square miles. Um, and in the first 15 months of New York City doing street to home, you know, our, our methodology, uh, the, the three out of five boroughs of New York City achieved the two-thirds reduction goal a year early. So this stuff really works. And the other two boroughs, Manhattan just kind of has more. They're going to catch up. They think they're on track to hit it this year. So we're, we're fairly confident that it, before Mayor Bloomberg leaves office, which was his goal, he did a five-year plan to end homelessness, not a ten-year. He wanted it to be solved on his watch that there'll be a two-thirds reduction in street homelessness in the whole city. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.